Hello and welcome. President Joe Biden just released his American Rescue Plan for jobs, economy, but more importantly, housing. He wants to give you more money to buy a house. He wants to build half a million houses for low income families. He wants to make sure that housing is equitable to blacks and Latinos. The housing is energy efficient. He wants to make sure that he gives you money up front to buy a house up to $15,000. Overall, he wants to give you $64 billion with a B every single year for the next 10 years. But, but. We have a big problem. Who's going to pay for it? Let's go and find out. Unemployment has been down from 14% from Trump's time and COVID time to down to 7% now, which is phenomenal, but inflation is higher at 5%. So I ripped through his entire plan section by section to see what he's proposing and how can it be beneficial for you if you're a home buyer, if you're selling your house, if you are a low income family looking to get into housing. But more importantly, I want to explain to you my opinion if his plan is going to work or not work. And in the end, I want to tell you the big problem. There is a big problem that we're facing and you must figure that out. Before we even get into the plan, here's a reality. Why is there a housing shortage and a problem? And you guys must understand this. What caused this, right? The backdrop of this, what caused all this problem? And here's what happened. From 2000 to 2010, when the market crash happened in 2008, before that, we were building up to 20 million houses per year. Now 20 million after 2010 became 6 million. So now we used to produce 100%, now we're producing 30%. So over 70% people are now looking for a house and the builders are behind because on top of that shortage, what happened is that COVID hit and the prices of materials went up, okay? I don't know if you guys remember, but in 2008, FBI, CIA, other agencies just invaded Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae agencies and found out where the corruption was happening. Why were the loans given to, to people who were dead or people had 20 houses and had no income? And I know that for a fact because I know friends who worked there. That kind of corruption resulted into much more stricter rules. And that's what caused the slowage of people getting loans. So this is not coming from me. This is coming from the CEO of Zillow. You can see his name up on the screen. But overall, the shortage of houses transpired from us building less houses. Let's go through all the lists one by one and let's figure out what's real, what's fake, what's fluff, what really means something. So the number one thing that Biden wants to do is get rid of these exclusionary zones. What are exclusionary zones? There are zones where people cannot build low income housing. These are also neighborhoods that are worth millions of dollars, large single family houses. You're not allowed to build any low income housing around that. In my community, I do have low income housing community right next to my house. But during Trump's time, Trump has changed the rules. So people who are living in suburbs and larger, bigger communities and houses and HOAs and all that, they have their own rules and own regulations. They don't allow other people, especially lower income people, to build housing there. So I think this is a step in the right direction. It remains to be seen if we can influence local counties and cities and states to actually deploy that. Now, Biden also said that there will be massive amounts of evictions if he doesn't protect the renters from the landlord, which is simply not true. And I will show you an example from a personal landlord perspective. There are agencies out there that are giving you support right now, at least in Fairfax County and other counties, neighboring counties in the Northern Virginia DMV area. So this email clearly says this tenant was behind in a couple of months of rent. This agency jumped in, asked me a bunch of questions, and a few months later, they're paying me the full amount of rent. And that is a reality. So I don't think that Biden is fixing any problem. Biden wants to get rid of this 1031 exchange. What is 1031 exchange? In simple words, it's really an investor or any homeowner moving in from a smaller house to a larger house of a larger value. And then you can have some tax savings and other benefits. He wants to kill that. 
I don't see this passing, this law passing because it will kill the revenue that the investors bring to the market, the jobs that they create. The next thing he wants to do is he wants to give you $15,000 upfront, not as a tax break, not after you purchase the house, but right up front. And I think that's a great incentive, especially for first time home buyers. I think it should be first time, second time, three time, doesn't matter what time. Give some incentives, increase the home ownership, let people buy more homes. $15,000 for a low income family could make a difference of $70,000 in terms of house value. I think it's highly likely that will happen, highly likely that Congress and Senate will pass this law because it's not a lot of money, but a lot of benefit to the community. Now, he also wants to offer a tax credit for people who are paying more than 30% of their income in their house mortgage. And, and I think that's a really, really great idea because it will help people. It will help people keep their income and debt to income ratio manageable. Whether it's gonna happen or not, I'm not so sure because this is almost like saying, I'll, I'm gonna incentivize you, give you money up front, but also you can buy a bigger house because I'm gonna cover you for 30% or more of your debt to income ratio. So I'm not so sure if this is gonna fly through the Senate, okay? I'm skeptic about this one. He also wants to give eviction protection to people who are renting because 14 or so million people are behind in their rent. Moratoriums get lifted, forbearance ends. What's gonna happen is investors are gonna dump properties in the market. As a result of that, you may see evictions. Now, do I think this is gonna fly or not? I am not so sure because landlords can always find other ways to do evictions. They could make you know, a, a pattern issue or you trash my property issue. It doesn't always have to be because you're behind on rent. I don't think that this is gonna fly. I'm glad that he's providing attorney help, so he says on his website, but whether or not he's gonna succeed, I'm not so sure. So next up is Section 8 housing. He wants to expand and put a lot of money over 15 or so billion dollars towards expansion of Section 8 housing. Section 8 housing is when a landlord gets a check, a tenant gets a check from the government every single month based on their income level. This is an excellent idea. I myself built affordable housing and I think this is a great idea if you can pull this off and get it passed through the Senate because it's gonna benefit the landlord and the tenant. Folks, this is the kind of laws we have been looking for and we should embrace, but it doesn't happen. So if he can pull this off, this is gonna be a winner in my books. Now, this is an interesting one. He wants to create a federal credit reporting agency. Folks, we know that credit agencies are rigged. The whole credit system, all these different scores, like FICO score one, FICO score two, FICO score three, Vantage score one, two, three. Three agencies independent are controlling the game and they always favor the wealthy. And I know because I've been on both sides of the coin. I've been a poor student with negative $32 in my bank account. And I've been on the side where, where I had substantial wealth that I could spend money, travel and do all these things. And I understand and see how the system is rigged. I have more choices, I get more mail, for bank loans and this loan and that loan to pay off credit cards and large amounts of credit limits. I don't see it working because I think when you go to a broker or a car loan or a mortgage, any company can easily say, well, we only take Experian, we only take TransUnion. What it will do for you as a consumer though, you can take your federal credit score and show and, and match it and say, well, you know, you're showing a 699, I'm showing a 730, you know, let's negotiate because this is a fair credit reporting score. And ultimately, it's a lender's choice to pick the score that they deem is the right score. Now, he wants to build 1 million houses. Let's think about this. We were at 20 million, now we're at 6 million. Building 1 more million houses, is that gonna make a dent in the picture? I think not. It's too little, too late. It's just too small of an amount. To, it's almost like a drop in the ocean. One million is not gonna cut it. Is it gonna help some people? Sure, it's gonna help. Now, what is gonna help is he also says he's gonna have half a million houses for people with median to low income. Now, that is gonna help people who can't really afford a house right now because they don't have a down payment. Next up is he wants to make houses energy efficient, solar, windmill, all that nice stuff that you hear in Silicon Valley. I don't know if it's gonna fly. I don't know who's gonna pay for it. There are no details provided for this. So I don't think this is gonna fly. I hope, I would love to have solar in my house, but I can't because it's too expensive. 
I won't pay too much attention to it. So lastly, the big problem that I talked about. Janet Yellen is yelling in front of Congress. She is the US Secretary of Treasury. And she is saying that if we don't pay our bills on time, we're gonna have a catastrophic failure to our economy. What does that tell you? We don't have money to fund these extraneous plans that we're making. $64 billion, great. I wish we had that money, let's spend it and let's help everybody. But who's gonna pay for it? So here's my closing statement. Here's what I think is gonna end up happening. They're gonna try to tax the rich who make over $400,000. Rich are way too smarter than the government. They have lobbying firms, they can outsmart anybody. They have people who are 10 times smarter than their government can hire. Our government cannot afford these people, they're so smart. The people who are making policies and laws are always a step behind. When they pass on the buck to Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and other folks, they're gonna pass it down to their employees in terms of cut downs in their benefits, cut downs in their 401k plan, and on and on and on. The person who's gonna pay these bills is us you and me and usually the median to lower income people are the ones who are going to fit the bill for the 64 billion dollars so that is my synopsis i'm a bit skeptic i don't want to be negative but i also want to be realistic your own secretary of treasury saying we don't have the money we can't pay our bills yet you want to write ppp checks to people you want to print the money i mean I, i'm just speechless <laughs> i can't i can't really say anything anymore you guys decide so overall i think it's a good intent good idea but to say that i'm going to do this in 10 years is a bunch of you know what i would call b-s right tell me what you can do in 40 years not try to make a political statement you're going to do this in 10 years because you want to stay present for eight years if you like the content please smash the like button show some love to your boy ak uh, I appreciate you guys doing that and also click the notification button. You don't want to miss my next topic is going to be actually on Wells Fargo and what they're doing messing up your credit lines. So it's very important you subscribe and click the notification button. If you do subscribe, please let me know in the comment section you have subscribed. I will personally thank you and comment, uh, comment back at you. I do want to give a shout out to Adam Hollier who's a senator from Michigan who commented on my one of my videos about selling your house for more cash. And here's his comment. And I took a notice of that and I Googled Adam and I realized he's a senator in Michigan. And so I appreciate Adam for you commenting on my video, for liking it, for understanding, you know, who's providing real value versus the fake YouTubers. So I appreciate you and I took a notice and I want to acknowledge that. So thank you, Adam, for doing that. As always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. I appreciate you guys and thank you so much for watching my channel. I want to make sure I give you guys the most honest information and I bring you information that these YouTubers who are posting these pictures of burning houses and this and that, that they're lying to you. Don't believe in fear mongering. Be positive. You know, see behind the curtains what's going on. It's going to help you and level the playing field. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye.